Hello, and welcome back to the Crime Reel. Today, we shall be looking at the life and crimes of Geza de Kaplani. Geza de Kaplani was born in Hungary on the 27th of June 1926. He was one of three sons who was born into a wealthy aristocratic family. Living on their family estate, he was largely shielded from world events of the time, but during his early childhood was subjected to violence at the hands of his dictatorial father. During one of his father's outbursts, Geyser suffered a beating so severe that he lost the sight in one of his eyes. When Geyser was 12 years old, his father died and the violence stopped. He later went on to study medicine at the University of Szeged, a prestigious research university in Hungary. He graduated with honours in 1951 and moved to Budapest where he practised as a cardiologist. Following the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, he fled the country and after briefly visiting England and Denmark, he settled in America. However, when he tried to resume his work as a cardiologist in his new hometown of Boston, he found that his Hungarian qualifications were not recognised and he would need to complete state exams before being allowed to practise again. Geyser was a very intelligent but arrogant and self-important man who was frustrated by his lack of standing within the American medical community. He retrained as an anesthesiologist and spent a year working at Milwaukee Hospital in Wisconsin before returning to Boston to attend Harvard. He went on to teach anesthesiology at Yale before taking a position at San Jose Hospital in California. It is rumoured that Geyser was a womaniser, often dating multiple women simultaneously and even proposing to many of them while still dating others. It is believed that after his initial infatuation with these women subsided, he started to treat them increasingly badly. He was a successful, professional man with a good income and he wanted a beautiful, poised wife on his arm to solidify the impression of a perfect life. In June 1962, when Geyser was 36 years old, he met 25-year-old Hajna Piller. Hajna was the daughter of George Piller. George was an Olympic and world champion fencer who had defected to the USA following the 1956 Summer Olympics, during which time the Hungarian Revolution had taken place. George died on the 6th of September 1960, leaving behind his wife and daughter Hajna. Hajna was a former model and beauty queen, and after a whirlwind romance with Geza, they were married in early August 1962, just two months after their first meeting. To any outsider, they looked like the perfect couple, but the marriage was troubled from the start. Less than three weeks after their wedding, Geza visited a friend in San Francisco and was informed, possibly incorrectly, that Hajna had a lover. He was furious. Returning to their home in San Jose, Geyser had decided that Hajna would pay for what she had done. On Tuesday, August 28, 1962, at around 7pm, Geyser decided that it was time to punish his wife for her alleged infidelity. Blasting out loud classical music, Geyser tied Hajna to the bed in their apartment. For approximately three hours, Gaza tortured Hajna using his medical equipment and nitric, hydrochloric and sulfuric acid. Gaza then called the police himself. When the police arrived, Hajna was in intense pain. Her facial features barely recognisable after the sustained attack. Gaza was immediately arrested calmly explaining to police that he was not trying to kill his wife, that he simply wanted to disfigure her so that no other man would ever desire her and be embarrassed by her in the way that he had. As paramedics attempted to treat Hajna, they suffered burns to their hands due to the level of acid covering her body. Hajna was immediately taken to St Francis Memorial Hospital. She remained in the hospital 
for 33 days in excruciating pain before succumbing to her injuries on September 30th, 1962. Gazer's trial for the murder of his wife started on January the 9th, 1963. His lawyers wanted to argue the case on the basis of him being not guilty by reason of insanity. However, Gazer completely refused this approach. He was adamant that he was not insane and felt that he was justified in his treatment of Hajna. However, when the prosecution showed the court pictures of the damage inflicted upon Hajna's body, Gazer changed his plea. His defence team now claimed that Gazer was suffering from multiple personality disorder and the crime had actually been committed by his alter ego, a Frenchman he referred to as Pierre Laroche. A doctor testified that Gazer was suffering from schizophrenia with paranoia, delusions of grandeur and a persecution complex stemming from his father's abuse. Gazer was found guilty of first degree murder and whilst he could have been given the death penalty, he was instead sentenced to life in prison due to his mental state. He was sent to the California Institution for Men in San Bernardino County, where it was assumed that he would remain for the rest of his life. In 1975, after serving just 12 years for his crime, Gazer was released on parole. Massive controversy surrounded the decision, as it was alleged that the horrific post-mortem photographs of Hajna had been removed from his file before it was passed to the California State Parole Board. The chairman of the parole board subsequently resigned for personal reasons. On 13th of November 1975, Gazer was allowed to travel to Taiwan to work as a doctor helping patients in a Catholic hospital. By the time the prosecutors and general public were made aware that he had been paroled, Gazer was already out of the country. The decision to allow him to be released from prison was met with a huge public outcry, and when forced to defend their actions, the California State Parole Board reported that the hospital in Taiwan desperately needed a cardiologist with Gazer's skills. It later transpired that Gazer had tracked down this missionary hospital in Taiwan himself and had convinced the parole board to let him devote the rest of his life to those in pain. A condition of Gazer's parole was that he continued to work at this hospital. He did so for four years, during which time he remarried. Eventually becoming tired of the constant parole checks, he simply disappeared at some point in 1979. When his disappearance was discovered, a warrant was issued for his arrest. Unknown to the Californian authorities, Gazer and his wife had moved to Germany, where his Hungarian qualifications were still valid and he had resumed practicing as a cardiologist. The following year, in 1980, the administrators at the hospital in Munich where he worked found out about his past and he was immediately fired. However, no contact was made with the US authorities and no further action was taken with regards to the outstanding arrest warrant for his breach of parole. Once again, Gazer disappeared. It wasn't until 2002 that Gazer was tracked down again. He was living in Bad Svishnan in Germany with his second wife. Two years earlier, he had become a naturalized German citizen, which effectively prevented the Californian authorities from having the authority to return him to prison for breach of parole. When approached by a reporter in 2002, Gazer pleaded for details of his past not to be made public, stating that he had paid enough for his one crime, and if published, the story would ruin his life. It was also claimed in this report that the Californian authorities were aware of his location prior to him becoming a German citizen in 2000, but they failed to follow up on this. It is unclear whether Gazer is still alive today. If he is, it is assumed that he is still living in Germany and would now be 93 years old. That concludes the story of Gazer de Kaplani. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be interested in hearing all your comments on this one. Just for a bit of info, when I first set up to record this, I thought I'd set up outside. I thought I'd let you hear a bit of bird song. Within three minutes of recording, a kind gentleman up the road decided to start chainsawing one of his trees down. So I've had to come back inside and re-record. I tried giving you a different experience, 
but it was obviously not going to work <laughs> this week. Thanks for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Crikey, there was a lot of hard words in this one. I'm trying to work out which one was my hardest one to say. An theologist was difficult. Still can't get it right. And um, the place in Germany, Bad Zweisensen. Oh, that was tough. Bad Zweisensen. Okay, if you've got a word that you struggle to say a lot, put that in your comments. I don't know, it might work, it might be funny. Who knows? Thanks for listening again. Goodbye.